Hey everyone, it's David Michael. I'm back with my first uh, thrift store haul video in a long time. Um, as you know, I've been doing those European vinyl shopping trip videos. So I want to thank everyone again who have uh, who watched those three videos. Um, they were a lot of fun to make, and obviously I had a lot of fun in Europe uh, vinyl shopping. So uh, if you watch those, even if there was a small little glimpse of one, I really do appreciate. So uh, I appreciate it. So thank you. Also. Uh, if you find me talking a little too fast in this video, which I'll try not to, uh, Vinyl Richie, if you know Vinyl Richie's channel, if not, visit him. Uh, he pointed out in my last video that um, it took me seven and a half minutes to get to my first record, which was Black Sabbath. Sorry, Richie. That's a long time. <laughs> Sorry about that. I didn't even realize it until you pointed it out. So uh, to appease those of you who uh, hate the long intros, we're going to try to get right through this tonight. Um, I have a bunch of new arrivals that I can't even show you tonight. Um, brand new ones that came in the mail while I was in Europe. We'll try to get to that next video. Um, it's Saturday night. Um, I'm going to be posting this later in the week. Thursday and Friday. It was just vinyl. It was raining vinyl. When thrift stores rain, it pours. Because I had a 44 album haul at thrift stores. And then there was one garage sale at 44. I know it's a lot. I'm not going to do it in one video. We're going to do it in two videos, and hopefully it's not have to be three. So um, let's get right to this. First of all, I'm going to do a little homage to Andy at Andy's Vinyl Den and Gregory Short, who sometimes like to show their uh, their soda pop, as they say in America, uh, what they're drinking that night. So what I'm drinking tonight is the Throwback Pepsi. Oh, how about I show it to you? The Throwback Pepsi. Um... They brought this out to celebrate Canada's 150th birthday coming up on July 1st. And um, nothing says happy birthday, Canada. It's 150th birthday, like bringing back a soda can from the 70s and 80s. It's not really well thought out. But anyways, to you all, cheers. I'm going to be drinking a rare soda on camera tonight. And by the way, we don't call them sodas in Canada. It's, it's called pop. How am I doing, Richie? Anyways, what you're listening to, I'm being a big giant hipster tonight, and we're listening to Noi. There you go. I just wanted to, if you hear something in the background, that's what we're listening to tonight, Noi. I quite like Noi. I don't feel like a hipster, but it seems to be the album of choice for young hipsters in my city. Okay. Like I said, 44 records, two days at thrift stores. What we're going to get to first is uh, two records from a local guy named James. Uh, I don't know if he does YouTube or not, James Val. But anyways, he's kind of a well-known guy in my city for uh, progressive rock. Kind of like Dan Keen is for um, at, uh, Dobbs, Dots and Loops Vinyl for his psych leanings. Uh, James is kind of well-known for uh, progressive rock. And um, I had messaged, uh, I sent him a message asking if he had an album for sale because when I was in London, I had found an original pressing of this album um, at a store called Flashback. And uh, my daughter and wife had gone for coffee and I was supposed to meet them at a certain time and I was running low on time. I ran to meet them. I was going to come back and pick up some records and I forgot to go back. And I was leaving the next day. So I forgot this record in London. I didn't pick it up. James had it and he had one other album that I was looking for. So I'm going to get to that right now. James sold me uh, a super nice condition copy of uh, Phaedra by Tangerine Dream. I believe this is kind of like a mid-70s vinyl pressing. So uh, I'm kind of dipping my toe into the Tangerine Dream waters. How, that's pretty deep, isn't it? Anyways, uh, James sold me a really nice copy of Tangerine Dream Phaedra. And also, uh, I needed, I badly needed an upgrade to this record. And uh, James had an, an early 70s uh, ABC Records pressing of Genesis Trespass. And I might be burping on camera from the pop. I'm sorry. I, Andy, I don't know. And Gregory, how do you guys do it? Anyways, uh, Genesis uh, Trespass. Their first real album after um, from Genesis to Revelation. Uh, but this is a really, really kind of first album. Um, there you go. So thank you, James, for that. All right, let's get right to this. We're going to go with some thrift store finds first. And this will be some garage sale stuff. And... We'll see how long we can go before it gets too long, and then we'll break this off into a, a second part. This was, I'll show you the price first. $1.99. 
for a copy of Rolling Stones, and it's an original mono pressing of Big Hits, High Tide, and Green Grass. So really quickly, I'm trying to my, keep my stories to a minimum tonight, but I went to the thrift store with my wife. There was a kid there, uh, had a big stack of vinyl, and I was like, shit, I missed the boat on those. And he was trying to peel these stickers off, trying to get them off so he would pay less. And he was having some great difficulty doing it. And I think he kind of gave up. What the kid didn't know is that you will never pay less than $1.99 for records at this one thrift store. So it was kind of like, I don't know what you're doing that for. But I kept on saying to myself, please put it back, please put it back. And he did. He put them all back. What's cool about this copy, like I said, it's an original mono pressing, is the booklet is still intact. Which is very rare to find in these ones. There's a booklet inside, if I can find it here. There you go. There's a little booklet inside here. As you can see the, I watch, and I'll probably wreck it showing to you. There you go. Anyways, that was uh, from a thrift store Friday night was a, an original mono pressing of the Rolling Stones. All right, I'm gonna try to speed through these here. Um, I'm gonna preface everything like I always do by saying these albums are all in excellent, well, excellent. They're all in VG plus, VG condition. Very nice playable records where I would be bringing them home. Lord knows I don't have room for garbage records at this point in my life. Do you see my videos? You see my videos, don't you? I don't have room for garbage vinyl at this point. But uh, this was Friday night and I came home. I played uh, Crib with my son, Crib, uh, this card game, I guess. I've never played it before, but he's, my 14 year old son's excellent at it apparently. And I said, okay, I'll play Crib with you, but I gotta play this one record I got from the thrift store. And I got a copy of The Best of Iron Butterfly Evolution. This was a dollar. This was, uh, this is an original yellow uh, Adco Records label pressing. So uh, got that. Uh, and I don't know if my son, I'm gonna guess my son hated it, but. Um, that my son was nice, nice enough to entertain me by letting me play uh, some of these thrift store uh, vinyl I got. Got a copy of the Spencer Davis Group, Best Of. And what's cool about this one is I don't actually, I don't have any Spencer Davis in my collection. I have Traffic, Steve Winwood, Blind Faith, um, but I don't have any Spencer Davis Group. And what's cool about this one, this is um, one of those really old ones on their old Island Records label. If you can see the back here. I love that old original Island, Island Records label. But it's a Canadian pressing um, back when um, Island Records was distributed, when they first started, by Stone Records in Canada. So it's kind of a, a rare thing to find. But anyways, every Spencer Davis uh, group song you would ever want is on this, on this record, probably. So that was a nice find for a dollar. Okay, we're gonna go to some garage sale. I'm gonna kind of jump forward to the garage sale. If you're on the YouTube vinyl community, like I always say, like I always say, um, you saw a photo of these records, or well, at least a, the stack of them anyways, and some were visible. And there was a turntable next to the records in the, in the photo. The turntable I have already gifted to my nephew. He was using a uh, less than perfect turntable. And um, he badly needed a new one. And I had picked this immaculate, I think there was a Toshiba SR, SR120, I believe it was. Beautiful, in, uh, like in beautiful condition. It was in storage for 20 years, they said. And uh, it, it kind of hurt to gift it to him, but he needed it. So uh, that turntable, if you saw it and you wanted to know what happened to it, it's gone to my nephew, and I hope he's enjoying it. Anyways, garage sale. Um, really quick sale, uh, really quick story about the garage sale is um, I answered an online ad for a garage sale for this turntable. The, the ad made no mention of vinyl. And... Um, so I emailed him about it. He said, yeah, I got this turntable. He sent me a photo of it. He said, perfect, I'll take it. Exactly what I want. And the price was dirt cheap for this table. And uh, I said, oh, do you have any records to go with it? He said, yes, I do actually. I'm putting some records out now. I got about 100, 150 records. I said, awesome, what do you got? He told me a list of bands. I said, great, I'll be coming by first thing. He goes, the garage sale started Friday. And he said, do you want to come by Thursday, a day early, um, just so I don't have to worry about selling this stuff? Oh, hell yeah, I'll come by a day early. And I did. I came by in the afternoon. He was setting up in his garage. Turntable was there, immaculate turntable. He goes, they're my records. He goes, they're $3 each if you buy more than 10. And 
like the turntable, he took immaculate care of his records. I couldn't believe it. So, um, and I left a lot of there for other people because I already had, um, I had a lot of them, but I did grab some stuff that was good, uh, stuff from my personal collection and good trade bait, to be honest with you. But an album that um, Doug at Fat City Vinyl featured in one of his videos, I believe, or um, on his blog or something like that, Doug, is a band called Cat. Cat was a Canadian band. This was like early 70s. Um, rock band with uh, some psychedelic sounds going on in there. But what's cool about Cat is um, it featured, this might be a Canadian only reference, it featured a, a young Gary O, who in the 80s went on to have a hit single with Shades of 45. There you go. Anyways, Cat, uh, really nice. And I was telling Doug, uh, the reason why I mentioned Doug is that I was like, wow, where did you get that album from? I've been looking for it. And uh, lo and behold, not too much longer, uh, much later, I found a copy of Cat. Really, I think that might have been their only album. It's a, like I said, a really, it's not the greatest album on earth, but it's a really nice to you see it around for cheap, pick it up. Um, an artist that does get, doesn't get no love in my country, although she sold tons of records, because you see them at thrifts. I go to, I can go to a thrift store every day this week and I will find one of her albums. And if you're in my city, you'll know this to be true. You go to London, and this woman is revered. Um, I think because her music fell in line with that 70s glam scene that was so big in the UK with T-Rex and Slade in the suite. Um, but like I said, here, she gets no love. But I found an immaculate copy of Suzy Quattro. Um, I just love this album. I love Suzy Quattro in general. This one, uh, 48 Crash, that's the that's the mega song on this one, 48 Crash. If you don't know that song, go on YouTube and listen to 48 Crash. Suzy Quattro, one of those albums you might see at thrift stores and you might bypass, but this album rocks. So that was at the thrift store, or at the garage sale. Um, another Rolling Stones album, Made in the Shade. Made in the Shade was a mid-70s kind of greatest hits album. Uh, Brown Sugar, Tumbling Dice, Wild Horses, Angie, you get the drift. Uh, second Rolling Stones album I found that day. One at a thrift store and one at a garage sale. Didn't have this one. I'm not the biggest Rolling Stones collector on earth, but um, I should do a video just of the Rolling Stone albums I found at thrift stores. Like, I found, I have found more Rolling Stones albums at thrift stores than I would ever imagine. Um, so I pick them up when I see them cheap, is what I'm telling you. All right. Um, this one was one of the biggest surprises from that garage sale. It's a British funk band from the early 70s. My, I think it might be like 71, 70, 71, 72. Uh, Seaman Day. And I had a look on Discogs and it's, it seems to be quite the little desired album. Here's the back of it. It's an original pressing on Janus Records. They were a primarily instrumental funk band, but it's not it's not primarily funk. Um, I guess they're known as, a, I guess if you look online, they kind of fall under the funk banner. But there's a lot of really neat sounds uh, happening in underneath all that, the heavy bass lines. There's flutes, there's some progressive rock sounds going on. Really long, really long songs. Um, yeah, like, you know, it's a 10 minute long song. I mean, they, they really stretch it out. So it's not your typical funk album. Like I said, um, I, I highly recommend you give this a listen. It's really, it's really interesting. Probably one of the one of the biggest surprises from that garage sale haul was Seaman Day, an original pressing on Janus Records. I got an immaculate upgrade, Deep Purple's Machine Head, original Canadian pressing. It has the uh, Lyric foldout poster in it, which you hardly ever see, and it's got the original inner. But I have the original uh, fold-out lyric poster. It's very, very rare to find. And, and like I said, the, the vinyl is clean as a whistle. So that was a nice upgrade find for that one. I'm trying to get the camera there. Anyways, that was a nice $3 pickup from the garage sale. Speaking of 70s glam in the UK, I got a nice upgrade of the suite. Um, this one features uh, Little Willie, and it says on the front there in Blockbuster, my favorite song by the suite, Blockbuster. Um, I don't even know what to say about this album. It's just, uh, of that UK glam scene, uh, in the seventies, this is probably to me, one of the best albums to come out of that. So that was a really nice $3 pickup. 
I got a copy of Sticks, the best of. Now it's the RCA wooden nickel years. If you know what I'm talking about, follow me here. Before they broke it big, they were signed to a, a small uh, label called Wooden Nickel. I believe it might have been out of Chicago, where they're from. And they were distributed later on by RCA. Um, but that early sticks period from this era is that progressive rock sounds, like Man of Miracles. The only song you would know off here, possibly if you're not familiar with sticks, is Lady. That was the one hit single they had. So all this stuff is that Wooden Nickel RCA um, era stuff. That's really good. I'm really uh, partial to that stuff. Um, and this is an original, actually, blue vinyl in really nice condition. So um, I have all the original Sticks albums from that era, like um, like I was just talking about. But for a nice condensed listen to that stuff, that's, that, this is a nice pickup. Sticks, the best of on blue vinyl. Um, I'm not going to bother breaking open the vinyl. Trust me, it's blue. Uh, I don't want this to drag on too long. Another kind of blind buy, although I was kind of familiar with the band, is Pot Liquor. Levy Blues. Uh, another uh, album that's on Janus Records or Janus Records. Um, this is an original pressing. Um, Levy Blues uh, by Potlicker. Potlicker holds the dubious honor of supposedly supposed to be playing the, the final ever show at the Fillmore West Auditorium, the famous concert venue. And then there was posters out for the show. And in fact, there's still posters that go around um, you know, there's a whole, like, like we trade vinyl, sell vinyl, there's rock poster circles. And there's a, a poster for this show of Pot Liquor playing at the Fillmore West, but the show never happened because they closed their doors forever. So they have that kind of dubious honor of being that last band that was supposed to play the Fillmore West. But anyways, they were from, uh, that kind of, that story went kind of nowhere. They all can't be winners. Anyways, um, they were from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And they used to open up for bands like uh, Aerosmith, Almond Brothers, ZZ Top. You kind of get my drift what kind of music this is. Um, I played this that one night, me and my son were playing cards, playing crib. Uh, I don't know if this is me playing cards or not. This is me shuffling. And um, it's okay. Uh, I don't know if it'll stay in my collection or not, but uh, it was a de decent enough listen. My son only looked at me dirty about three times when playing this album. So that, you know, that can't be too, too bad. It was only three times he shot me death glares. And it was Pot Liquor, Levy Blues, and original pressing on Janus Records was at the garage sale. Excuse me while I take a drink of my Pepsi throwback. All right, I'm gonna park that right now. Um, what's a garage sale without an, <laughs> the Eagles Hotel California? Um, there was some common stuff there. A lot of this stuff was, honestly, I picked up for good, it's good trader stuff. Uh, this has the original poster inside, really nice condition copy of Hotel California. And let's do a threefer. I'm not sure if that's a word, but we're going to make it a word tonight, threefer. Three Fleetwood Macs. Um, finding Fleetwood Mac isn't the battle, as they sold a kajillion records in the 70s. Finding nice condition Fleetwood Mac, that's the hard one because people tended to play their Fleetwood Mac albums. But what I got is all the original inserts, original book, um, Tusk. That was $3. I thought he maybe he would have bumped up his double albums, but he didn't care. He just wanted them gone. Nice initial copy of Tusk. A really nice original first pressing of uh, self-titled, the first album with Buckingham Nicks. And then the obligatory... If I counted the copies of Fleetwood Mac in my collection over here and in my cell boxes, I probably have 11 copies. I'm a junkie. What do, you, like, what do you want me to tell you? I love this album. This is an original textured sleeve. Very first pressing with the poster inside of Rumors. One more. Um, I keep on finding nicer a nicer condition copies of uh, Rumors, of the original pressings. So I pick them up, kind of make Franken albums of perfect ones, and then I'm going to have to eventually sell the rest because um, that's a lot of rumors to have. Um, you know what? We're going to cut it off right away. Uh, I've, cause this is what I have left from the two days of thrift stores. That pile. Holy crap. And then this monster pile. So there's a lot. And there's not, really not a lot of crap. Crap is relative to you and me, but... Like I said, it was. It might have been my final great weekend because I have to kind of slow it down a bit. I'm kind of uh, vacation broke a little bit, but since these were dollars and three dollars, 
A. And you know what? Let's quickly blow through these new these new arrivals I got because I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that I got uh, the one of the newest of the Tom Petty reissue series. Um, I'm very picky when it comes to Tom Petty for his reissues. I think I showed Mojo a couple of videos ago. I have friends who pick up all of his reissues blindly, no matter what, who think everything he puts out is great, which is fine. Uh, I have to be a little bit more selective with Tom Petty. You won't see me holding up Echo or Highway Companion. They're not my cup of tea. I, some people might love those albums. They're just not my thing. But I got a copy of Into the Great Wide Open. Uh, I did play this the other day. Love it, love it, love it. So, um... Of all that recent reissues, there was the only one I didn't have that I needed was Into the Great Wide Open. This one, this one came the day after I left for Europe and it just bugged the shit out of me because I had no way of streaming it online when I was in Europe. Obviously, I didn't have a CD player, I didn't have a record player, I couldn't go get a copy in Europe and listen to it because I was dying to hear it. But uh, so it was a long two and a half weeks um, to wait to hear this album, but when I got home, it was so worth it. It was the first album I cracked open when I got home was Hawkwind's new album, Into the Woods. Um, I had just recently read that, like their last album, it cracked the top 40 in the UK, so, which is amazing. Dave Brock is 165 years old, um, and he's still churning out great albums. This one is really heavy. It's, a, it's more of a heavy rocking album than, than, there's some space elements to it, obviously, but I don't know how he does it. He's, he's so old, he's still churning out amazing records, so good on you, Dave. Hawk went into the woods, just like I said, this that, this kind of exceeded my expectations for uh, what this one would have been. Only a couple more. I didn't get a lot in the mail when I was gone. I've been kind of um, raining it back a bit for new releases. This album came uh, today. Uh, Amazon hustled their ass and got this to me the day after release day. So a nice pleasant surprise on my doorstep that wasn't a flaming bag of shit. I don't know if kids do that anymore. I don't know. But I bought this out of morbid curiosity. And I, I kind of just, one of the things I had to hear. And let's talk about it first. Styx, the new Styx album, The Mission. Hang on, just, what, don't, don't, don't click pause or don't click, cl don't close that window. Anyways, really quickly, Tommy, Tommy Shaw had made mention that this album was supposed to pick up where 1978's Pieces of Eight left off meaning it was supposed to be the, the natural continuation to that album. And when I open this album, I usually, sometimes I look in the dead wax of new vinyl to see what's, maybe if there's any funny etching. This one has Welcome to 79, Welcome to 1979, which is an indicator that that's, that was what his intention was, because uh, Pieces of Eight was 1978. So if you've heard the first single, Gone, 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 that is not representational of the album. That is the commercial track. The rest of the album... It has an absolute linear theme to it. There, there's a theme to this album. Sorry. Um, it opens up with an overture, which kind of harkens back to that early um, sticks. You know, you can think what you want of sticks. You can call them a cover band. You can call them what you want. If you close your eyes, you would not know this was not recorded in 1979. Um, like I said, apart from Dennis DeYoung's vocals not being on here, um, I was massively surprised by this album. It's uh, They nailed that 70s Dennis DeYoung keyboard sound perfectly. The songs are good. And like I said, there's a, there's a theme to it all. And it flows so well. It's, an, it's a complete album, which is hard for me to say for sticks, but it's a complete piece of work. In fact, I wish they would take that Gong 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 song and bury it in the bottom somewhere because it's... If you go from the overture to the third song, 100 Miles From Home... Like I said, it, that's where it really starts to pick up. Um, I don't hate that song, Gone, Gone, Gone. It's just a little commercial for my for my likings. But you know what? Give it a sample. It's not an album that you can sample one or two songs. You have to hear the whole album. So it took them 14, 15 years to make a new album. And God, it's getting great reviews for a reason. Um, like I said, good for them. They, uh, they brought out just a massively surprising good album. So that was Sticks to Mission. Last two for you. This is a, another uh, multiple album I'm going to show you to speed this along. A um, couple of videos ago, I did a live unboxing of Iron Maiden's uh, new box set. And the two new ones that I needed came in the mail to go into that box. And in fact, I have not even opened them yet. Um, I, have, yeah, um, I have a lot of vinyl to listen through. Um, I don't know if you noticed that. I, I have a lot of records. And um, 
So this this is in queue to uh, crack open and play, but I got a copy of um, the latest in the Iron Maiden Rishi series, Virtual XI, or 11, and The X Factor. This album, um, wasn't fond of it when it came out. Still not massively fond of it. It's grown on me a little bit. Uh, Future Real's good. Klansman's good. Um, the Angel and the Gambler. I, I just, I've never liked that song. Sorry if you like that song. Anyways, uh, I never had this on vinyl. So, um, a nice addition to my Iron Maiden collection for that box set, Virtual 11. And the X Factor, which I've already showed you before, which to me is a, it's a, I think it's a totally fine Iron Maiden album. Um, as the years go on, it gets less and less hate towards it because it's Blaze Bailey on vocals. But uh, Man on the Edge is probably one of the top 10 Iron Maiden songs for me personally. In fact, I have a live version that's a B-side to a CD single where Bruce Dickinson is singing this uh, Man on the Edge, and it sounds phenomenal. Um, so that tells you something about that song if Dickinson gave his approval for him to sing that song. I think that might have been the only Blaze Bailey era song that he sang um, live in concert. But anyways, there you go. X Factor. I still got two massive piles to show you, and there's some great stuff coming up. I just randomly grabbed um, these ones to show you. And we're getting on a time here. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to end this one here. I'm going to hope for a Pepsi sponsorship. And like I said, we're going to have to break this up into two parts. We'll do that uh, coming up later in the week. And I don't think there'll be any more new arrivals coming in or thrift. God, I don't think there'll be any more thrift store stuff for a little bit anyways. I'm lying. I'm lying. I can't stop going to thrift stores. Anyways, uh, I want to sign off here. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. Um, I passed 800 subscribers. That happened really quickly. So thank you for watching my videos. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching again.